I want to show you a quick demonstration on how you can build your own custom font using Illustrator and Bird Font. Uh, Bird Font is not free, but you can download it as little as for a dollar. Um, I recommend you pay at least ten or twenty dollars, but um, this is something that you can get done um, almost for free. So I want to show you a quick way to do a font. You can start with a pre-existing font. I started with Impact. I kept one in each stage to show you. So here's what I start with is just the standard imp Impact. Then I added uh, bullet holes to my letters and I applied it to every single one and I converted my font to outlines. So if I look at this in preview mode, you will see the normal font the font created as outlines, and then the finished font, which I have um, knocked out or united. You have to have one single object. So to show you how to do that, I took these shapes and I selected each one individually. I went to my Pathfinder tool and I said minus front. Now you could select these if you wanted to give it the effect that it's got the mumps and unite them, but this was the effect I was going for. So when I finish then, I've got one single shape and not individual shapes. This is really important. Uh, it won't work otherwise. I have also found with bird font, at least the 1.9 version, that you have to keep your font black and white. It won't import a colored font. So now that you have your font made, I'm going to want you to do the entire alphabet, upper and lowercase, and all the other accents as well. But just to do the demonstration, I'm just doing um, the uppercase here. So what I'll do is clear out everything else other than the uppercase letters. And I will probably just stack them double here. And let me make it a little bit bigger. Okay, now I'll go to File, Save As, go down to Format, the bottom one should be SVG. It will change it up here to SVG, say Save. Replace, because I've already got one in there called that. I went to SVG 1.1, file type, just L, regular SVG, and the subsetting, none, embed, preserve, illustration, editing capabilities, leave everything else to default, and say OK. Still saving. Now I can close this down. You're going to want to download the font called Bird Font. If you go to the internet, um, I think, well, let me just double check, I believe all you have to do is go to bird font, um, org, and you can download the version that you want. I have found on the new operating system that I have, I had to download 1.9 and not 2.0, and here you can see um, what you want to pay to download the font and what platform you're working on. I use the 1.9 DMG right down here on the bottom is what I downloaded because I am on a Mac. Okay, so there's not much for tutorials on this, so I'm going to show you what I've learned. You launch the Bird Font software program. You go up, oh, that's my old one in here. I've got another type I created. Um, I'm going to go to New. File New, it's going to bring in the entire alphabet, double click on A, go to Edit, Import, SVG, double click and it should all load in here, let me back it out, it's got to be in here somewhere. Come on. The plus and minus is the zoom in and zoom out for these controls. I have found these controls are not intuitive to me. Come on, where did it go? There they are, way down here. Oh, 
Okay, so the tool you want to move your type around is this tool here, the second one in the row, the one that's got arrows in all four directions. You want to click, I don't know why this is flashing this way. Come on. Now if I can go to File, I want to select all this here. Note what happens if you don't get all of it. The inside was separated. Draw a box around it to make sure I have it all. Move it up here and set it on your baseline. Okay, what I would also recommend you do is move them all together. If you can here. Okay. Okay, so now let me zoom back in. All right, so what I want to show you is if you can see these arrows, this is the distance between your type when you start typing. So you'll want to move this in fairly closely. Um, on both sides and unfortunately you kind of have to ballpark it here for each letter you do. Now what I would say to do is select your B. Come on. Sure, do I have all of it? Say copy. So command C and then you can delete it from here. Go back to Overview, double click on B, Paste, Command V, put it down here on your line so that they all line up in a row when you type. And I want to make sure my distance is approximately the same as the other font, the other letter. And go back to Overview, go back to A, Copy out my C, go to Overview, double click on my B, drop this into place, move the arrows over, okay. So you get the idea, when you get done with everything, you can come in here and throw away all the, all the other fonts. So only, only A is left. Then you're going to go to name description and your typeface here. This is important. Make sure you pick a name that is one word. You can't separate the word in this one as far as I've been able to tell. Yeah, you can't copy and paste either. That's right. So regular versus bold versus italic. You can assign what it is. This is kind of bold. Um, full name, so I can say shot up Ooh. font. And unique identifier, I can say the same thing. Version 1.0, this is my test font. And then you can put the copyright in here, you know, um, all rights reserved, you know, so on and so forth. Okay, all right, so now, you can do export, save as, shot, up, font, any tags, it can go in my folder called shot up font, say save, I've already saved it in there, so I'm just going to close this down. If I go to my font, let me open that up real quick, um, whoops, what am I doing? Come on. Okay, so here it is. It saves it as a TTF. If I double click on it, it's going to launch my font book. It's going to show me what it looks like. I can say install, which it'll just install it twice because I've already got it in there. So it will install. You might get an error. I don't always, but you might get an error. Just select it and say install checked. And if you go down here, you can see um, 
alphabetically here, shot up font. There it is. So now if I go back to Illustrator or InDesign or Photoshop or any of those, and I type, this is my test shot up font. I can select this. I can go to my font. Woohoo! Went too fast. Shot up font. Oh, I say that and now I don't see it. Oh, did I call it my shot up font? Now I gotta go back and see what I called it. There we go. So here you go. And it's like any other font. I can assign a color to it and I can convert it to outlines. So it works just like any other font, which is pretty neat. So have fun with it. I've done a couple of different fonts. Uh, I've done, um, as I was playing with this, script font. So that's a script font I created by freehand. This is my, let me see, my flower. Let me see if I've got that. Fla flower font. Font. Um, so you can have fun. You can come up with a whole bunch of different um, options for yourself. Don't save. I will tell you. Um, let me go back to bird font here. And if I go back to recent. I was going to show you if I could. Let me see if I got it in here. Flower font. Bird font. Choose application. Yes, yes, yes. And of course now it won't open that way. I'm not that typical. Okay. This is my bird font. Oh, discard. Maybe that's why it went open. Open. Here we go. So here's my flower font that I created. So all capital letters, and I literally just started out with one. So you can see it holds pretty good detail. And I did the whole alphabet with this way. But you can see, try to make sure that your guides are consistent. So have fun, and I can't wait to see what you came up with.